Righto. I've just realized I've got a lot of tripods given that I'm recording on a tripod and I've got another one of these in a bag in there, which I won't bother setting up. The reason I've ended up with so many tripods is I've upgraded over the years and also sometimes I do multi-camera events that are static. So just having a, an extra tripod lying around to pop an extra camera up is super handy rather than having to hire it uh, again and again and again. So the Tilter one is my new baby, which is beautiful. I'm gonna start using it a lot more, particularly with the C400, uh, given it's a bigger, heavier camera, and I'm gonna start to use um, a bit larger packages for my kind of commercial work. It's gorgeous, I love it. The one I had prior to that was the Manfrotto, which is very similar in height, but is obviously a lot lighter because the head can't take the same amount of weight as the 12 kilo tilter. Now, this particular model is the 504X head, which did pretty good. Like you could balance a camera relatively nicely on that. Just didn't find I had the exact amount of resistance in, in a smooth, fluid way that I wanted. I think I paid maybe $1,300 or $1,400 for this tripod. So it's carbon fiber legs. Um, it's two stage, but you've got two clips. So it's a little bit slower in that regard. You can take the, the mid divide out nice and easily for the spreader. Uh, it's just a quick release button, which is super handy if you need to get nice and low. But it, it was a bit of a beast. I did have the unfortunate mishap of dropping this head first into the beach one day, into the sand, and it's just never quite been the same. I, I took it apart and cleaned it all out and put some uh, new lube in and stuff, but it's just always been a bit crunchy, which is a little sad. But for the price, this was good. But I think now that Tilter exists, I think this is the one I would send people to if they're wanting to upgrade to a fluid head. So this little fella here is what I use on my B cam a lot for interviews. You can even be A cam if you're doing static interviews. It's light, it folds down nice and small for travel. And if you're not operating, it just locks off, holds your camera, you can level it up. You can go quite tall if you need to as well. So you're kind of matching the other two with the center column. So this has been a really useful travel and B cam non-operated head. If you try and operate with a heavy camera on this head, you just end up wobbly and bouncy and it's just, it's just not worth it. So that, hence why I don't even have the arms on them because I just use it literally as a static camera for interviews. Really, really handy. So this one is the Manfrotto 190X video tripod. Uh, can definitely recommend this for static and uh, if you're using smaller mirrorless, you could probably operate this at a prosumer level, um, which, is, which is fine. This is my old school. I bought this second hand back in the day. Uh, this was my first foray into a really steady, really sturdy tripod um, coming from whatever I had prior to that. I think I was just using my stills tripod for video at that stage. Now, this was a beast. So this is the 503 HDV um, model. It's got a little bit of counterbalance. They call that the uh, CBS counterbalance system and it, it did really well. I was, I was happy with what I was getting. Again, I wasn't doing too much operating. So this one I was using about 10 years ago. So before I was doing kind of the, the level of work that I'm doing now. So I didn't really need it to be a decent fluid head, but it's a, it's a great unit. I've kept it around just to have as an extra tripod when needed. So I bought two of these late last year. They, were, they retail for about $600. Uh, from small rig they're the small rig heavy duty tripod they they have a suggested rating of about nine kilos on the head doesn't really have any counterbalance and it's not really a fluid headed per se um, it is nice it's okay but i don't do any operating on it i got these for event work where i've got static cameras for conferences and things and it just gets me that extra height to stay well above some of the waitresses and waiters walking around or staff or event crew or even just guests whose heads would kind of clip your shots as they're going through. So this is like the tallest tripod I own. The, I've got two of them, which are really handy. In my opinion, I wouldn't bother operating on these unless you're using a really small camera. They are more just perfect for the height and the, the price. They are carbon fiber. It's a one release for the two stage system. So they're really quite great value um, but just it's I just didn't find operating on them to be at all adequate so uh, I would keep that in mind if getting these ones but if you're not doing too much movement and you're not following sports and things it might be a great option so 
for about 600 bucks Australian, you're laughing with these ones. So the way I've ended up with these tripods is I've got a couple of really tall ones for static event work. I've got one that I use as a B cam and travel just to save on space and weight. So that's why I've kept this guy around. This literally lives in a bag and very rarely comes out unless I've got a gig where we're using lots and lots of cameras and it's just, again, another static one to have instead of hiring another tripod. This is gonna be my Ducks Nuts and this was my sacrifice for not buying a Miller and saving money, but I think it's really gonna do me well. Please do me well. And this was my previous kind of A tripod um, which was, yeah, like I said, a decent investment of about 1400 bucks at the time. And it served me well, but now I'm wanting to progress and be better and be a better operator. It was time to move to a, a higher level fluid head. So that's my little yarn as to why I've ended up with so many tripods now that I'm seeing them side by side and knowing that there's more in the garage. I think I might need to offload a couple. So we'll figure that out.